things. And my favorite thing to do is to build, especially toys. Um, <clears throat> I build all kinds of contraptions from, <clears throat> I worked on a submarine and I worked on a, the lunar landing module, but by far the most fun thing I've ever done is build toys at Build It Yourself. So um, I hope you'll enjoy building as much as I do. I'll give you, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Daniel, uh, Daniel Vieira. Uh, Daniel, can you say hello to everyone and, and Hi. share your passions? Hello. Hi, everyone. Nice meeting you. I'm Daniel. I'm from Mexico. I'm 23 years old. I'm actually studying electrical and mechanical engineer here in Mexico. And my passions are playing music, making robots, um, programming, making Minecraft, and also doing flying machines. My favorite project actually is a drone that I made myself. It took me a while to build, and then it flew away into existence. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping we can build something real fun with you guys. And yeah, nice meeting you. Great. So in the way of introducing you to time machines, um, who of you use an alarm clock? Who has an interesting alarm clock to wake them up in the morning? Does anyone like to share uh, an unusual alarm clock that you have? OK, look at this. Looks like Max has an, has an alarm clock all ready to go. <laughs> Great. Well, when I was in college, I had a lot of trouble waking up for an 8 o'clock um, solid state physics class. So um, the professor said he was going to flunk me if I didn't get to his classes on time. So I built an alarm clock to wake me up. And I wanted to get up in a civilized way. Uh, so my alarm clock, uh, the first thing it did is it uh, rang. Um, it had a feather tied to a motor above my pillow. And when the motor went off, the alarm went off, the, it turned on a motor, and this little feather would try to tickle me. Uh, and if I didn't get up to the feather tickling me, then there was a really nice bell, not a mean, loud bell, just a nice, soft bell. So if I didn't get up to the feather or the, um, or the bell, then there was this critter hanging from the ceiling and this critter had a cup full of water. So ultimately, if I didn't get up to the bell and the feather tickling me, then this big uh, nasty, um, this nasty monster would fly down from the ceiling and douse my bed full of water. So that was the ultimate alarm clock. I always wanted to patent that alarm clock. And that experience has turned into this project. So I'm going to share my screen and show you at Billy Yourself, every project starts with a problem and a mission. Every good engineer, before they start building, should understand what's the problem and what's the mission. So um, let's start with our problem. Who can read the, um, the problem here? Um, Max, would you like to read the problem? Okay, you can turn on your microphone and read the problem. Do you have trouble waking up in the morning? Are you often in a full mood uh, when you get up? Are you often in a foul mood when you get up? Does anyone have that problem? can't get up in the morning, and when you get up, you're in a really nasty, lousy mood. Okay, I have that problem sometimes. So if that's the problem, then we have a mission. Isabella, do you like to read what our mission is? No, okay. How about, um, uh, okay, Roger, I see your hand up. Get a cuckoo alarm clock. It wakes you up on time because you're in a good mood. 
and put you in a good mood, a happy mood. Uh, so that's our problem and our mission. Okay, we're going to um, we're going to study the history of clocks and cuckoo clocks in particular, and we're going to learn some programming tricks, and we're going to learn some mechanical engineering tricks, and we're going to integrate. Uh, programming in Scratch with building a, um, a cuckoo alarm clock. So it's a combination, it's really a robotics project where you integrate mechanical engineering with computer science and um, maybe even a little bit of electrical engineering. Okay, so um, let me, um, start by, I'll give you a tour of our laboratory. Um, so if you can, uh, Bing, if you can highlight the, um, or spotlight the- um, Yes, John. Up on camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me stop sharing. So you can see it on the big screen. Okay, so this is our laboratory. This is my, uh, my uh, desk. We have, um, uh, we have some contraptions here, Lego contraptions. We have, we do puppets, uh, computer and remote control puppets. This is a bird feeder. When you, um, when the bird lands or eats, from this can or could be any animal. When they eat from that can, it triggers this camera and it takes these pictures of animals up close and personal eating. These are brainstorm hats. We love to build brainstorm hats at Build It Yourself. Brainstorm hats make you smarter and they're made from what we call premium quality junk. And this is a uh, computer controlled, uh, it's a dragon robot. This is a flying machine made from all kinds of premium quality junk. A tuna fish can, an old soccer ball, and uh, lots of bottle caps. And then we have, um, over here we have a lot of musicians on our team. Daniel has his own band in Mexico. So we have a music studio and we do several projects at Build It Yourself on music. This is a contraption that earns money. Put a quarter in and, this, and these guys will dance, tell your fortune and throw you a piece of candy. All for mm -hmm. And then we have a jungle garden over here. We have a nature engineering program. And lots of, lots of contraptions back here. So I'm going to introduce you, we're going to introduce you to two clocks. I'm going to introduce you to a mechanical clock uh, that we're going to build that's synchronized with a scratch project. And then Daniel is going to introduce you to a computer uh, scratch project that um, tells time. Okay, so here we have um, a contraption, let me just show it up close, see if I can turn on the. Okay, so now you see um, we have a laptop here with a cuckoo bird, and we have the alarm clock, and then the alarm clock, we've taken this alarm clock apart. Um, the alarm clock had a couple of bells and a handle on it. A couple of bells and a handle. And we took those bells off and we took the back off. And uh, it's an electrical clock, so there's not too much interesting mechanical going on here. Um, but you could just as easily use a mechanical alarm clock. Um, it's really cool to take a mechanical alarm clock apart and see how all the gears and the pendulums work. 
But this guy here rings, when it rings a bell, we pasted, so we pasted, a, we built and pasted or glued a little uh, container that holds a ball, right? Whoops. So this ball sits on the, um, sits on the back of the alarm clock. Right here, whoop, <laughs> can't get the ball to stick there. Bend this back a little bit. See if we get this. Okay, there we go. So now we have a ball that's sitting on the hammer of the alarm clock. And when the hammer goes off, the ball is going to roll down the spillway. And then we have a little paper clip. Paper clip with some cardboard attached to it, and it's bent out and it sits on the bottom of the spillway. So that when the ball hits, go, rolls down the end of the spillway, then um, I'm going to put this bell in the cup to give it some weight. Okay. So now you can see the ball is going to roll down the hillway, the spillway hit that cardboard at the end of the spillway. When the uh, cardboard is released from the spillway, the string, um, the cuckoo bird on the other side of the string is going to fall down. And when it lands in this bowl, this bowl is triggered, is resting on a long arm. And this long arm will press a key on the computer keyboard. And when you press a key on the computer board, then the cuckoo bird, then the cuckoo bird goes off. Okay. So this is the opposite of how many clocks work. Many times it's the computer that controls the clock. In this case, we're designing a clock that controls the computer. And the beauty of this is that. When the clock goes off, you can make your computer tell you a joke or sing you a song or uh, make you dance, do a dance routine. Um, Daniel's even going to show you how he makes a cuckoo bird throw you candy. Or you could throw a cup of water if you really have trouble waking up in the morning. And we're going to teach you a little bit again about computer, computer programming, how you could program the cuckoo bird to dance. And we're going to teach you how to build these mechanical mechanisms. We're also going to teach you how you can present your project, how you can build cuckoo birds from crazy materials. We call it premium quality junk. This is just a cup with some with some paper, colored paper, hot glue on it. The key tools are cardboard, scissors, ruler, tape, paper clips, and my favorite tool of all, the hot glue gun. We use the hot glue gun at Build It Yourself almost like your right hand, essential tool. And then I'll hand the ball off to Daniel with one last message, this is tool rule number one at Build It Yourself. Roger, can you read what tool rule number one is at Build It Yourself? Okay, don't cut finger off. All right, very important tool rule. <laughs> okay, Daniel, would you like to introduce Scratch and how we can use the Scratch program to, um, uh, to, to make a timer? Yeah, of course. Let me share my screen. Okay. So back here. Um, How many of you have done Scratch? I see Ariam in. Oh, oh. Okay. Lots of you. Good. Lots well, of you. Yeah. We love Scratch. And Daniel's really good at scratch. 
um, and he'll tell you, well, he'll, 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 show, he'll show you how we use Scratch. Okay, guys, so let's see. Let, we'll see first a simple example of um, a simple alarm clock. Then we'll go to more complex stuff. And then at the end, I'll show you how you can, um, we will be adding a new project on Build It Yourself that will be extending our alarm clocks. That will be uh, Time Machines 102. But we will start seeing this really, really simple one first. Okay, so let's go inside. This is actually one that John made. So as you can see right here, I'm on John's uh, page. So if we see inside this project, we have two sprites right here, right? One is a chicken that we cannot actually see, but if I uh, show it, then we will see that there's a chicken uh, flying. And then we have another sprite, and I will, I will show you later why we have this one, okay? So the main idea behind this project is if, if we run it, that when you run the program, it will ask you how many hours do you want to sleep. Now, in our case, because I don't want to wait like three hours to show you that it works, I change this to seconds. So instead of hours, we will look in at seconds. Let me stop sharing real quick because I don't know if I shared my sound. I just want to make sure that you will be able to hear everything that goes on. Okay. Okay. Great. So now I will say that I want to, let's say I want to wake up in six seconds. I mean, I, I don't think I can go to sleep uh, before the six seconds and go wake up again, but let's just say that it will happen right now. So I will say, okay. Now the timer goes down. So that's that's a, a really fun alarm clock and a really simple one. Now, those of you that know how Scratch works, you know that you can use delays, right? Those delays use time. And that's the thing that we use right here to know how how much time do we need to wait, right? So first of all, we have uh, only one sprite, which is the chicken. This is the one that we'll be focusing on. And then it all starts with the green flag, right? We always start our programs in Scratch with a green flag. And that's why we have it on top of every single one of those programs. So now, when we add the event, when the green flag is clicked, we will hide the chicken, right? Because we don't want anyone to see the chicken when um, we are sleeping. It's just a surprise when we, for when we wake up, right? So we will hide the chicken. Then we will tell it to go um, to one place of the screen that we want it to be when we wake up. So in this case, it will be these coordinates. Now, uh, do all of you know what coordinates are? Yes, sir. Yeah, great. Okay, so yeah, um, the coordinates are basically the position of the objects on the screen, right? So. When we are talking about coordinates, we use a plane that's um, X and Y, right? X in the horizontal plane and Y in the vertical plane. What that means is that if I move this chicken, actually you will be able to see that right here below where it says the sprite name and the coordinates, it, we have X and we have Y. If I move the chicken to the left, and leave it right there, you will see that the X direction change, right? Now we are on minus 65. We can move further to the left and it will change uh, to a greater number in the minus scale, right? We go to the right, then we can go to the positive scale. Now, we have a zero in the middle. So our actual coordinates start from zero in the middle and they go minus to the left and positive, positive to the right. That's in case of the X direction. The Y direction work, works uh, similarly, and we have zero on the middle. And if we go up, that's positive. And if we go down, that's negative. Okay, so now that we understand how that works, then we can, if we can position our, your, our chicken, whatever we want it to appear um, at the beginning of, of the alarm, we can see the coordinates right here, and we can copy them and paste them in this block that's called go to, right? So this little block, what we'll do is basically tell the chicken to go to a specific place in the screen. If I say zero and zero, just like we just talked about, it'll be the middle of the screen. So let's try that. I will double click this block. And now we see that chicken is right at the middle of the screen, okay? Okay, 
So that's how we use that block. And now, now that we know that the chicken is right where we want it to be when we uh, wake up, we will set the time to zero. That's because that's our starting point. We he need to, um, this is called a variable, and we always need to set our variables to a uh, starting um, value when we start our program. So the starting value for time will be zero. Do will any one of you know what a variable is? Yes. Yeah, can you explain to me in your own words what a variable can do? It can store a number. Great, yeah. Roger, yeah, you're a hot shot. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It can store numbers, and we can use those numbers to, um, to do things in our program. In our case, those numbers will be our time, right? That will be our hours, and in our case right now, because it's modified, it will be seconds, okay? So now, now that we have uh, the variable of time to zero, we will ask the user, how many hours do you want to sleep? That means how many, um, at what time do you want me to wake you up, right? So it'll ask that question that will appear right here. And then it has this little uh, text that says, and wait, right? So we are actually waiting for the response to get to the program so that we can use it later. That's why we are waiting for the user to click on the green arrow or click enter on the computer. Okay, so now, when we enter a, a number right here and we click on the on the blue our blue um yeah tick. <laughs> uh yeah what will happen is that that value will be stored in the answer um block right here so this bubble that's called answer that's where your answer for the question will be stored so in, if i show this bubble right here on the screen you can see that now we will be able to see the answer. So let's say I put a eight right here and I say, okay, now you see that there's an eight right there, right? That's where the value is stored in the answer um, block for the question, right? I'll stop it right there. So now we know we have an answer. Now we can use that answer to, to set the time that we want to wait for, right? So now we will change the variable again. But in, that, in this case, they will use the hours variable, yeah, right? So actually this, the time variable, we are not using it, but we are setting it to zero from the beginning because I will show you another example right um, after this one that has a clock that uses some of those values. Okay, so now we will multiply this answer by one and that's because we want to use, um, second, we want to do seconds only. If we wanted to do more, then we can use you, we can move this value higher, change this to a higher number, and that will um, make the wait longer. So for example, let's say I wanted to do minutes instead of seconds. If I wanted to do minutes instead of seconds, what I could do is that I could multiply this to 60, right? So instead of um, when I say one right here, instead of being one second, now because it's been multiplied by 60, it will be 60 seconds and that will be one minute, right? If I do two right here, that'll be two minutes because that's two times uh, 60, which is 120 and that's two minutes, right? So that's how we can make this go uh, between seconds, minutes, or even hours, okay? That'll be actually really, really high number, but Let's just stay with one right now because we are doing seconds. Then we will repeat this. This is called a loop. Do you know what a loop is? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Tell me what a loop is. You can repeat things. Yeah. Basically, that's how, that's why it's called a loop. You're totally right. It can repeat things that we tell it to repeat. And in some of them, we can actually um, use a limiter to that loop. So we can say that it will repeat things until something else happens. So in our case, this loop will be repeated, repeated until hours is equal to zero. Now, if you have seen how the program works, when we set the time to eight seconds, for example, hours will start from eight and it will start going down from eight until it reaches Zero. That's when the loop stops and then 
we will show the chicken and broadcast alarm. Now, broadcast is another interesting here, interesting thing here in, in Scratch. This is um, where we can send messages to another sprite or send messages in the same sprite. So in our case, we use it in the same sprite. And what this does is that it, it tells that the alarm has been triggered. So now we have another event that's called when I receive. So when I receive alarm, which is the message that we are broadcasting from the bottom of this block of code, when we receive alarm, we will repeat a, a block of a code that will move the chicken, change the, the custom of the chicken, and also play the sound, right? So that's, we actually separate this from the main code so that we know that this is only the movement of the chicken and the sound of the chicken. It doesn't have to do with the timing and the calculation of the alarm clock. So that's why it's pretty useful to use the broadcast block because we can separate uh, different ideas in the same uh, sprite or even in the same program. Okay. So, great, Daniel, that's really, um, this is a great explanation. Um, Daniel, in the interest of giving everyone some time to edit the program, can you suggest mm -hmm. how they could um, uh, edit this program? We could put the URL in the chat box and suggest yeah. anyone like to put a different character up there instead of the cuckoo bird chicken, uh, change the character or maybe make the character tell you a joke when you get up or maybe make the character play a different sound. In other words, let's see those of you who can edit this program to change what happens when you get up. And then after you have some chance to program, Daniel will show you what uh, Time Machines 102 is like and what that black rectangle at the bottom allows you to do. Does that yeah. make sense, Daniel? Okay. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, so let me, well, first of all, if any one of you has any questions about how to change um, the design of the program, we have, um, I already sent the link in the chat box, and if you get to this link, you can go to the sprite by clicking on it and then go to uh, the custom stuff right here. And then you will see two different sprites, right? So those are the, the drawings that we are using for the chicken to seem like it's flying. What Excuse you can me. do right here Excuse is that me. you can Excuse change me, Daniel, this. If I can yeah. chime in. Um, we will teach you how to draw chickens like this or cuckoo birds. Uh, or other cartoons in PowerPoint. So one of the skills you learn is cartooning and how to draw your own character to wake you up in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the end, you will be able to make your own animation with the drawings that you learn uh, from us. So you will be able to create your own little flying bird or a running, um, I don't know, a velociraptor or something like that. So, okay. So I'll stop sharing and then you have a couple of minutes to make changes to the to the program. And if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or yeah, you can share your screen and we can help you through the process. Great. I see a few names here that we recognize. Hi, James. Hi, Fiona. Hello, Jason. Welcome. And also Nico. From Minecraft class Nicole, and James right. from Minecraft class. Hi. Great. I did have some Minecraft class a bit. I think I was on Minecraft class too, but. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, of course, Ivan. We recognize you too. Hi, welcome back. There's a new book. Hi, Nico. Hi. Yeah. Good so, to your see challenge you. over the next uh, 10 minutes um, is to. See if you can um, change the sound when you get up or make the chicken say something. You could even record your own. Maybe you re could record a song and the chicken could sing the song instead of squawking. So. Good idea, good idea. 
Yeah, those of you that know Scratch, um, this is a chance to show off your stuff. A good way to learn how to program or how to build is to take something apart or um, look at something that works and try to make it even better. And then once you understand how everything works, you're in a better position to build your own ideas. Great. Okay, so does anyone want to share your, your screen and share with us the process that you're Ooh. Um, working on? All right, Roger, go ahead. So I would like <laughs> We can learn by watching what others are doing. I got this. I changed the sound. One. I changed the sound. And I made it say wake up. Can you say what kind of change? I changed the sound to tick. Oh, so every time, every time it, um, every time the clock advances, you make a tick tock, tick tock. Great. That's a, that's a good start. All right, Roger. You know, by making that edit, it's clear you know how Scratch works. Great. Can you show us how you could make the bird say, um, um, rise and shine, or early birds get the worms? I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. <laughs> the early cuckoo birds, Get the juiciest worms. All right, there you go. So if you don't have any experience in Scratch, guys, watch Roger, and he's showing you how to. Wow. Uh, Roger, can you explain where you got those mm -hmm. speech uh, commands? How did you get those speech commands? Uh, I added an extension called text to speech, which can, create, which can create the, uh, I, I can just type something to you, and it's for a, a speech with a voice, <coughs> I said, and the language. Fantastic. Okay. So Roger is going beyond the standard scratch. Adding... Um, I think I think that's not Roger. Oh, sorry. Who's sharing their screen is oh yeah. Huh? Yeah, are you? Hi, hi, share you. Hello. Cool. Thank you, Bing. <laughs> okay, it's clear you you have some experience on Scratch. Yes. Yeah, Chuaru is from Japan, actually. Chuaru is from Japan. Hi, Chuaru. Thanks for joining me to the demo class early in the morning. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I think we have James also raise his hand. Maybe we can see what he's okay. um, working on. Yeah. But before we switch the ball to James, mm -hmm. uh, Sharyu, you like um, uh, Sharayu? Would you like to hit the green flag and let's see how your how your sound works? I need to. Uh, I need to also share sound. Yes. Okay. Hello. Wake up. Time to shine as well. Hello. Wake up. Time to shine as well. Hello. Wake up. Time to shine as well. Right. Hello, wake up. Time to shine as well. Hello, wake up. Great. Time to shine right. as well. Okay. Hello, wake up. We got it. I would wake. I would surely wake up to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Cool. Yeah, it right. kind of sounded too funny to me. <laughs> okay, cool. 
James, did you have your hand up? Would you like to? Yeah, let me show you my. Oh, we have two, James. OK. Yeah, do I need to add more? Wow, what have you done here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me find the, uh, 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 let me go to text to speak. I did find it. Good. So you uh, added a background? Yeah. Great. And now. Wake up and I wonder what to do next. OK. So well, where do I put the speak wake up? Well, it, you you can um, you can put it there. You should you should put a wait after that, so it gives it some time to say to say wake up. So you might put wait two seconds after you say speak wake up. So you can go to control the orange commands. Control the orange commands. Oh, just one. And then wait two seconds and put that right under speak. And then let's try it out and see what happens. Okay. And I see you've changed the bird. It's a, it's a, it's a pterosaur. You made a different cuckoo oh, bird. Let's try let it me, out. Uh, let me one hour, I guess. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. You it's got it. Okay, we can't see it, unfortunately, but I can hear no, that it's yeah. working. Well, you can't see it? No, well, I was able to see it. Yeah, the, the pterosaurus uh, actually appear on the are, screen, you right? see the pterosaur is like, oh, a, it's not moving. Yeah. Great, my, my mistake. That's one. Did you see it? This is, Great. you see, it, it, it looks like a bird, but it's not. Nice work, James. Okay, it looks... That's a dinosaur cuckoo bird. <laughs> yeah. Love it. You, you clearly know Scratch. So good. Anyone else like to share before Daniel gives you an introduction? Uh, Leo, Leo. Raise Leo. Up. Leo? Leo, you raise your up. Leo, we share. Go ahead, Leo. Okay. I've just got Zoom from the Mac to him. Uh, Sound screen. Desktop one, so. Um, Have any of you ever made a, a, a scratch clock before? No? Okay. Uh, I attempted to, but I think. I have never made a scratch clock before, but I think it's going to be fun <laughs> if I make it. Um, uh, well, I think alarm, alarm clocks are one of my favorite projects. Okay, we're gonna need to spotlight Leo here. Hold on a second, let me see yeah. if I can. Uh, add Please, can I explain why you have to do this? Um, so. Uh, hold on a second, let's see if we can pin you. Can everyone see uh, Leo's screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. yes. Go for it, Leo. Okay. Three. Two, one. <laughs> okay, Leo, we get it. That was a funny one. <laughs> I remember one time walking out the door uh, to a very unpleasant um, dropping on my shoulder. <laughs> That's not a happy way to wake up. <laughs> Okay, it happens. All right, um, so what if we, um, uh, Bing, we have 15 more minutes. How would you like to use that 15 minutes? Daniel could uh, give a brief introduction to, um, oh, I see another hand up. We could either show some more scratch projects uh, or introduce you to 
uh, advanced alarm clocks? I I personally would prefer the uh, advanced alarm clock. So okay. if you can show us that, yeah, that'd be great. Great. It's clear we have some pretty hotshot scratch programmers here. Yeah. So yeah. Preston, I, uh, if we have time, we'll hand the ball to you at the end of the class, all right? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. So uh, Daniel, can you explain why we have that black box at the bottom of your program and, and the and the cool robotics uh, construction system you're working on? Yeah, yeah, of course. Let me share my screen too here so I can show you um, what what's going on. So let's see. Okay, so now this is another um, program that uses the same code that you have on yours, but I only added um, a scratch clock in there. So when I run the program, you will see that there's an analog clock running at the background of the program, right? So that's another thing that we could add to our alarm clocks to make it more uh, feel um, more intuitive to the user, right? So that they can see the time, they can see how time is moving and how it's reaching the end of the of the night, and then they have to wake up, right? But then the question here is, what's this gray block right here, right? So what this actually does is that we are uh, developing a system called the construction system that will be added to a project on um, Time Machines 102. And that system is this one right here. Let me stop share, sharing. And I will show you that on the camera. Right here. OK, can you see my yeah. camera? Yes, we can. And everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me move to this side. Okay. So right here we have a, I have a tablet on the background and it has um, the same program that we were looking at before, right? But we have a different thing right here, and that is that we have a little puppet on the left of the of the system, and then we have a sensor looking at the screen, right? At that sens sensor, if you look really closely, it's looking right at the st spot where the gray square used to be. And that gray square is actually in, been underneath the sensor. So now what will happen is that we can set the timer to the alarm clock. So let me do it right now. What do you think is going to happen, guys? The sensor is going to um, make a goose noise. Well, you see something to the left of Daniel's screen. You can see it just turning to the left. Oh, that there just finished right there. <laughs> okay. So, so when the, yeah, and it stopped. Cool. Yeah. So in, in Time Machines 102, Advanced Time Machines, we'll, we can show you how to use an Arduino microcomputer with a sensor on the scratch screen to control a servo or a motor that will make a puppet made out of premium quality junk, dance or fly or squirt water at you. In general, wake you up with a smile on your face. <laughs> so there you have it. Time machines at Build It Yourself. Thank you, Daniel. That was a cool demo. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, Bing. We could hand the ball off to Preston if he likes to show his project and then you can wind it down, Bing. Yeah, sure. actually, I have a question. Sure. Um, how do you like make a sound on the code? How do you, uh, Daniel, do you want to um, show how to um, use the yeah. sound effect? 
Yeah, can you share your screen so that we can um help you through it real quick? Um okay. Okay. I think that okay. Okay, great. So you see that there's a tab called sound. It's actually kind of a, like yeah. pink color. Yeah, right there. So click on that one. And then you can uh, drag the block that's called start sound or play sound. Those two will um, play one of the sounds that you have on your sprite. So for example, if you go to sounds. Okay. Okay. There you have a sound called pop, right? So if you click on the play button, you will be able to hear the pop sound. Oh. Right? So you can either record new sounds by clicking right here or add yeah. a different sound. So there you can add different sounds to the to the code. You can add your own or you can add the, some from the Scratch library. And then by using the play sound um, block on Scratch, you can uh, place those sounds whenever you want them on your code. That solve the question, Kristen? Um, actually, how do you search like the sound? Oh, if you uh, put your mouse on top of the um, speaker, right on the left, left button corner, right there. And then actually, yeah, you can choose a sound right there click on the magnifying glass and there you have a very very and big library of sounds and you can choose one of those and just add it to your sprite and program okay okay thanks yep of course all right okay guys hope to see you in time machines in the time machines workshop yeah, so thanks, John and Daniel. Um, welcome, Ben. Nobody has questions so far. I'm going to introduce the time machine course. Uh, does that sound good to you, John? Sure. OK. I'm going to share my screen. So the time machine course is going to start next Wednesday at the same time like today, 7 p.m. Eastern time zone. And you already learned the problem and the mission. And uh, our students today also read loud, loudly about the problem and the mission. So we want to help you to uh, build a alarm clock and that can wake you up in the morning. Also, we will teach you how to do the research about what is the coolest alarm clock that you see. And also here's our project plan. Uh, you're going to describe your own solution and we will teach you how to draw your own animated characters on PowerPoint. And you can build that based on your own imagination and we'll make it come true. And then we'll help you to write the program to control your time machine, which is also why that we learned the scratch coding today. I know there are some students, you are our young builders, annual members, even elite builders. So your scratch level might be already kind of like very good. Uh, however, in this class, we're going to make you improve your scratch coding skills, and then you can apply it to build your time machine in your real life. It's going to be very cool. And then we build the mechanical wake up mechanisms, like which is your alarm clock. Okay, of course, the last part is always final presentation. You're going to present your own project uh, with your teammates all together. So it's, it's going to be a very cool and fun project and has uh, eight classes per, in total. And you're going to learn both coding and also mechanical engineering skills. And here are our former students projects here. You can see they have the really cute robots connected with their computers, or laptops. Okay, here is our schedule for the time machine course. It's gonna start on August 1st, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Central time, 4 p.m. Pacific time zone. And also for students from Japan, or other countries, you can contact your personal course consultant. We'll let you know and figure out the, your own time zone and your hours. And basically, it will be all very matched for your own schedule. 
and we will go do the class, one class per week, every week. It's going to be eight weeks, and you will have less homework, um, but you have a lot of fun during the class, and you're going to learn and become the master of the uh, mechanical engineer and also the coding, mechanical coding engineer. So it's going to be fun. 